Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to clean the carburetor on your lawnmower with a quantum engine made by Briggs and Stratton. And here's the lawnmower. It's a Murray lawnmower with the Briggs engine as I mentioned. The issues with this lawnmower is that it will not stay running. It will only stay running if you keep pushing the primer bulb here. This mower has been stored for many years. It's not really used as you can see. So what I suspect is that it has a dirty carburetor or some varnishized gas inside the carburetor as well. What I'm going to do first though is start up the lawnmower and show you exactly how it's acting. Just in case you have the same problem, then you'll know what to do with your lawnmower. Also make sure before you start anything in your shop that you have it well ventilated. So I'm going to prime it first. This mower needs quite a few shots right now. Prime it again. So as you can see, it's pretty obvious that there is an issue. It's only running with the primer bulb being pushed in all the time. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to take the carburetor off and clean it. Before the video starts, here are the tools that I used in this video today. I used a 5 16 nut driver, a Phillips screwdriver, a flat screwdriver, a quarter inch ratchet with an extension and a 3 8 socket. I used a pair of pliers like this and I used a 5 16 socket here as well. I also used my impact wrench to remove a few of the bolts. If you do not have one of these, don't worry about it these tools here will suffice. I've got it up on my table here just to make it easier to make the video for you guys to see how it's done. I've also pinched the fuel line slightly with a pair of vice grips. Make sure that the vice grips don't go on too tight because you could damage the fuel line. This is just to stop the flow of fuel to the carburetor when I take it off. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this plastic cover. There's two Phillips screws that hold it on. Once the two screws are off, the cover will come off. And all I'm going to do is slide it back here on the pull cord and leave it there. And now you can get a better view of the top of the carburetor and the linkage and spring. Now what I'm going to do is remove the air filter by removing the 5 16 screw over here. What works good for this is a nut driver. Now the cover and the air filter will come off, just pull up. Once those are off, you need to remove the three 5 16 screws over here. A small cordless impact is much quicker. And now just take the whole cover off. Now I'm going to show you the carburetor. Here it is. Today I'm going to remove the carburetor completely to do this. You can also sometimes just remove the bowl nut clean the bowl nut itself because I believe it is a jet. Clean the bowl and the carburetor and put it back on without having to do all of this. I do have an older video showing how to do this. I'll put the link to it underneath this video so that you can go watch it. So now before you take the carburetor off, I suggest that you take pictures of the spring and the linkage to see what configuration that they're in. You can also bookmark this video as well to come back to it if you're not sure when it's time to put stuff back together. I've decided I'm just going to pull the cover from the metal tube here. So for my next step, I've set up a rag here. I'm going to remove the fuel line clip here. There will be a bit of fuel leaking out when I remove it. That's why the rag's there. And I'm just going to use a pair of pliers like this, squeeze the clip, bring it back. Sometimes too what I do is I just turn the fuel line on the connector here to loosen it a bit. Now I'm going to use a flat screwdriver and just pry the fuel line off. Again, there will be a bit of fuel leaking out. Now you can also have a small container like this to trap the fuel. That may be a better idea. Be extremely cautious when you're dealing with open fuel in your shop. Just one spark can ignite the whole thing into a huge inferno. What you're going to need now is a quarter inch ratchet, an extension and a 3 8 socket. What you need to do now is remove the two 3 8 bolts on each side of the carburetor.
Now all you need to do to remove the carburetor now from the linkage is just tilt it. So I'm just going to tilt it up like this and now it's out. And remember it only goes in this hole here. And now the carburetor is completely off. Now I've set up the carburetor on a clean piece of cardboard just to absorb all the fuel that's going to leak out of the carb. Now what you'll need is your quarter inch ratchet again and a half inch socket. And what I'm going to do now is take off the ball nut. Now there will be a bit of fuel leaking out, that's normal. You may want to put an extra rag here to soak up the fuel. Again, be very cautious. And here's what it looks like inside there. It's actually pretty dirty. And there's little holes here that are possibly quite dirty as well, causing an issue. And just the dirt that you see here can be causing an issue as well. And here's the bowl nut, it's quite dirty. It looks like it's a jet as well, so it's probably so dirty that it's making the lawnmower not run properly. Now I'm just going to take off the float. When you take off the float, the little needle valve is going to come out with it. Be careful you don't lose that. I'm also going to take off the bowl o-ring here. Now using my Tecumseh tool part number 670377, I'm going to remove this seat because I will be spraying it with carb cleaner and I don't want to damage it. I am going to put a link underneath this video to where you can buy one of these tools online directly. As you can see the end of this tool is like a crochet hook so if you don't have this tool you can just get a crochet hook at a local sewing store just like I have here. Now if you don't spray the hole here with carb cleaner then don't bother removing it. I'm removing it because I am going to spray it so basically I just go down, bring the seat up, and because I'm going to reuse the seat, I'm going to be very careful with it. It's just a round piece of rubber like this. Now there's two ways that I use to clean a carburetor. I often use carburetor cleaner, spray the parts, let them soak, clean it off or wipe it off, and then it's good to go. The other method I use is an ultrasonic cleaner. You just basically put it in here in the solution. Let it go for whatever amount of time you want, pull it out and let it dry and it's ready to go after that. But since most people don't have an ultrasonic cleaner at home, I'm going to show you the method with the carb cleaner which is more than likely what people watching this video will want to do. If you only clean one carburetor once in a while, it's not worth spending the money to get an ultrasonic cleaner. So I've separated all the rubber parts including the needle valve from the rest of the other parts. Now I'm going to put the jet here or the bowl nut inside the bowl and I'm going to spray everything with carb cleaner. Again be very careful with carburetor cleaner because it is extremely flammable. You can also buy a large can of carb cleaner and just soak the parts right inside if you want. I'm going to let these parts soak for a good half hour to an hour and then come back and wipe them and maybe spray a little bit back on to further clean it a bit more. Just a quick tip, you may also want to wear safety glasses when you spray carb cleaner, especially if you spray it inside the holes because it has a tendency to shoot right back up and sometimes go in your face. So my parts have been sitting for approximately an hour. Now I'm just going to clean them up. I'm just going to pour the old carb cleaner here right on the cardboard. Now with a clean shop towel, I'm just going to wipe off the gunk. If you still have a bit left like this, you can always respray a bit of carb cleaner and just basically scrub it off. I usually use my ultrasonic cleaner to do carbs, then I don't need to do this. But I know that most of you guys don't have one and most of my videos are actually made for the DIYers and most of you guys don't have all these expensive tools and now you can just basically wipe off all the other parts now here's the carburetor body now an old toothbrush works good to just basically take off the gunk that was here 
it doesn't scratch the carburetor at all and it's nice and smooth. You can actually use this for the bowl inside here where you see some of the stuff doesn't really want to come out. This lawnmower had been sitting for quite a few years so the old fuel had really varnicized in there. And it does a really good job and doesn't leave any scratches. And you can do the same with the bowl nut, just use the toothbrush. I've actually set it up in the vise here, I'm just going to spray a bit more carb cleaner on the toothbrush. Wear your safety glasses when you do this. When you clean carburetors, you want to make sure you use soft tools that don't leave any scratches. If you do use a wire brush, make sure it's really soft bristles on it. Because there's still a bit of dirt that's hard to get off, I'm going to use a soft wire brush. Again, I'm just going to run it a few times. Now, as you can see in the bowl nut, there are some holes in there. What works good to clean those is a torch tip cleaning tool. It's got a variety of cleaners. You basically just find the right hole or the right pin and put it in. And basically just move it like this. This will get any dirt out. And you can do the same up top here. So all these holes look pretty clear now. And once you've cleaned them, you can use your air blow gun and blow out the holes. Make sure to wear your safety glasses. And I'm going to use the same tool to clean the carb here. Whatever hole you see, if you can fit one of these in, fit it in there, rub it back and forth, and it should make sure that little hole is clean. Also with the zip tie wire, sometimes you can clean all the other little holes that the torch tip tool will not fit in. So I'll make sure everything's clean. On this car, mainly the dirt was centered all around here near the emulsion tube. So I think I've pretty well got everything at this point. I will not replace the Welsh plug. I will only replace it if I'm having excessive problems after cleaning the carb. And this carburetor is non-adjustable, so you don't need to remove any screws to clean behind them. All I'm going to do now is air blow it and put it back together. And before I put it back together, I'm just going to clean the needle valve here. If you see a bit of dirt on there, just clean it with a bit of carb cleaner and a shop towel. Just another tip, if you think there's dirt inside where the needle valve goes in, you can always spray some carb cleaner on the rag. Put it in there with the carb cleaner and grab a small screwdriver and basically just turn the rag with the screwdriver and what that's going to do is clean the walls where the needle valve goes in. Sometimes there is fuel that builds up on the walls in there and you want to make sure you don't scratch the walls with the screwdriver that's why you put the screwdriver inside the rag. Now the first part I'm going to reinstall in the carb is the needle valve seat. I'm going to stick it on my Tecumseh carburetor tool you want the side with the ridge to be facing downwards and as you saw here the smooth side which is facing on the tool will be facing upwards inside the carb. Here, I'll take it off again just to show you. This side is smooth, this is where the needle valve will contact the seat and now I'm just going to slide it in the carb right to the bottom. Now if you don't have that tool you can use a 3 16 drill bit and just push it in. You want to make sure that it's right at the bottom. Next I'm going to reinstall the needle valve in the float so I'm just going to slide in the needle as you can see like this. And now you want to line it up with the carb and just bring the needle valve right into its hole. Line up the float here and then just put the pin back in. Now before you continue, you can pressure test the carburetor. I'm not going to do it because most of you guys don't have the tools to do this anyways. Simply cleaning it like this should do the job. 
and I'm going to put back the o-ring on the carb. Again, if these parts are in bad shape, just replace them. Oftentimes, you do need to replace the o-ring over here. And I'm going to reinstall the carburetor ball. It doesn't matter where it's located. It's not like the Tecumseh carburetors where there's a notch on the ball. And I'll put the gasket on the ball nut. And I'll simply reattach it to the carb. Now you don't need to tighten this up too much, I don't have the specs offhand, but just use common sense and just tighten it up enough. Not too much because you could strip the threads and now the carburetor is ready to be reinstalled. Now the first thing you want to do is reattach the linkage to the carburetor. So bring it up and again it goes into the hole over here so I'm going to have to tilt the carb a bit just like this and now bring the carb up and now the linkage is in properly. Now before putting your carburetor back on, you want to make sure that the o-ring over here on this tube is in good condition. You want to make sure that this is all tight. Sometimes this tube over here gets loose. This is normal, but if it's dangling, then there's something wrong inside. And the same goes for this tube over here. And I'll just line up the carb. And you want to reinstall both bolts here. And I'll tighten up both bolts evenly. I'm just going to snug this one for now. Tighten up this one. Then come back here. And just double check this. And I'm going to make sure that everything's working here. And that looks good. Now I'm going to reconnect the fuel line. Now I'm going to slide the fuel clip back in its position. Now you can release whatever pliers you used here. Before putting back the rest of the parts, make sure that this gasket here is in good condition. If it's not in good condition, it could affect the performance of your primer. This gasket here is in good condition, so I'm just gonna go ahead and reuse it. Now this is the next part I'm reinstalling. You wanna connect this elbow here to the metal tube over here. And now you wanna start reinstalling the bolts. And there's two bolts that go over here. Again, make sure to reinstall these two bolts here evenly. And now I'm going to reinstall the air filter. This is how it goes in to the cover. Then you want to put these three little lips inside the grooves over here. And I'll tighten up the screw. Now I'm going to reinstall the top cover. And when you reinstall this cover, you want to make sure that this little lip here goes right in this hole here. So push it back. And now put in the two screws. And now the whole thing's reassembled. All that's left to do is for me to try it out to make sure that it runs good. That was the actual first pull guys, there were no camera tricks here today. So thanks for watching guys, make sure to subscribe, please tell all your friends and family about my repair videos, and you can see me here in my next video. Have a nice day.